What's up, everybody? You're listening to the Hustle and Flow Chart Podcast with your boys, Matt Wolf and Joe Fear. Check it. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Hustle and Flow Chart Podcast. Hi there. My name is Matt Wolf. Hey, Matt. How you doing? I'm here with Joseph Fier. Uh huh. Is that Giuseppe. how you pronounce it? Joseph. Joseph Fier. Joseph Fier. Anyway, yeah, who's we're our back. guest today? Me. You're our guest? And you. Yeah, we don't have a guest. It's a duet. It's a duet. And we're actually using these cool, fancy new mic stands. Yeah. Um, yeah so we don't have to hold these mics anymore. This is really cool. I actually feel like a stand up comic because I just like hold <laughs> the mic and like lean on it all the time. Right. But, well, yeah, you could do the mic drop still, though. Yeah, I could. Don't do it. If I took it off the clip, it's going to blast people's eardrums. <laughs> <laughs> so, today we thought it would be pretty cool to do a little kind of behind the scenes episode. I think one of the things that we get asked fairly often, uh, or not asked, but some of the commentary we get fairly often mm -hmm. is that we really like it when you don't have guests. We really like mm -hmm. the episodes where you guys just kind of talk about what's going on and what you're learning right now and what you guys are up to. Um, and we've had multiple people tell us like you guys should do more episodes like that. So yeah. we're kind of trying to make a conscious decision to do like one of them a month or something. So here's this month's. <laughs> <laughs> this is this month's. Yeah. No, it's uh, I think these are fun. Yeah, I love like doing it's, it's uh, there, and this is full transparency. We have not pre-planned this, so no. we might sound a little scattered at Pelham points, but I promise we'll get to the point, and you're probably going to hear better stuff this way. Anyway, <laughs> if it's like pre-scripted, this is weird. Our mental block usually stops if we we try to plan too much. We're just talking about this, yeah. like our personalities. We more or less trust the the outcome. Be, well, we think that we're going to nail the outcome, but the process to get to the outcome might be a little fuzzy. You yeah. know, we kind of bounce back and forth, indecisive on things, very decisive on things. We like shit that didn't work. Yeah. We Let's know, try the other way. We yeah. tend to know what point A is and what point Z is, but all the points in between mm. are a mystery as we go. Isn't that interesting though? Because I think a lot of folks don't try things or start new businesses or try new projects or invest in something without totally knowing them you know it's interesting what's you here? because we just Me. took this uh well you are well, thank you in <laughs> it's not <laughs> a positive wait until thing. i hear what you have not to say a okay got thing. it um no you are a very analytical person one that likes to know the steps you know five steps out or whatever but it's interesting that you are so cool with just kind of trusting that <laughs> It'll work out more or less. How does that work for you? I'm just kind of curious. I don't know if that's necessarily how my brain is working. I think that's sort of my outward appearance towards things. Yeah, but um, your actions, though, you still. Yeah, I mean, it... I've, 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 I've definitely had to hone in on letting go of control and knowing the exact path a lot. You know, like Do you blame me for that. <laughs> Do I blame you? No. I, bl I think I, I is that therapy session. No, we're not. I think I blame uh, historical evidence more than yeah, anything, yeah. right? Like, no, I'm just genuinely curious. Like, I'm like yeah, no. I mean, I, I think it's a, actually a great topic of discussion because Joe, we literally just took this assessment. Joe, you pronounce it. I don't know. The Enneagram? 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 Yeah, so Shannon. Hey, Shannon. Um, I'm sure you're tuning Hi. into this. She, uh, she doesn't listen to our shows. She's tired of us already. <laughs> she told us to take this this personality <laughs> quiz because she knows we're into Colby and we've done the DISC assessment and the Briars, Myers Briggs and <laughs> all the. We've, we've taken so many assessments and shared data and tried to better understand how to communicate with each other and how to sort of operate in our own zones of genius and that sort of thing so we took this one and this is a very fresh topic on our minds um my if you know anything about this test my dominant one was a number six mm -hmm. um basically what that means is that i like structure i like safety i like know where we're knowing where we're going i don't like uncertainty and i tend to get a little more anxious than most people when that uncertainty isn't is there right mm -hmm. when i don't have a very clear picture i tend to to have anxiety and panic and uh and, and that sort of thing but over the years i feel like that hasn't served me the best it's still there but i've had to sort of push down that internal dialogue that tells me okay you're trying to go from a to z but you don't know steps b or f or k yet so let's just not do anything until you know all the steps, right? That's mm -hmm. kind of how my brain by default operates, but I've had to suppress that part of my brain and go, okay, I know A, I know Z, we're going to fucking figure it out the rest of the way. Mm. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. 
Like it's, it's and and, uh, and I lean heavily on on our network and connections. I right. think I think that's one thing that we sort of we don't take it for granted. You and I talk no. about it all the time, but I think a lot of people take that for granted. Like who you know, who you have access to, who you can go to for advice and support and help at any time. Mm-hmm. And that network for us has grown bigger and bigger and bigger, especially in the space that we operate in, right. in the marketing business space. Let's, so, uh, let's dog ear that a little bit, actually, um, about network and lateraling over mm-hmm. to like something else. And also what we were talking about yesterday about... Um, kind of taken for granted how far we've come mm-hmm. and how much we have, you know, when we meet someone like a high school yeah. friend of ours that we've lost touch with in the last 20 years or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Dog ear those mental notes. Sure. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, but <laughs> you know, so with us, I know that we have a, a big network of people with various yep. levels of expertise, right? So we know we're, we're great friends with Kurt Molly. Mm-hmm. We're good friends with David Schloss. We're good friends with, uh, Ralph Burns. We're good friends with, with all of these people that have a very wide breadth of knowledge in the Facebook world. Shout so out I, to Ralph, by the way, overtime sponsor, one of our events during <laughs> traffic yeah. conversion. Thank you. So I, I don't tend to stress out about like, Oh, what are we gonna do with Facebook ads? Cause I know, I've got like access to a handful of people that I can count on at any time to ask questions about how to get there. And you default to like you're better. Eh, we're both getting better, I'll say. But mm. you you default to pretty good at asking your network for questions. I yeah. feel like you default to that where I more or less will kind of try to hack it out myself or research, which is right. interesting because I'm not typically a researcher and I am more people forward. I, doing these tests, it's kind of cool. Just even quest, you know, answering the questions. There's like yeah. 144 questions. You almost because you know you start answering the questions, and you know you're saying yes, that's me. I found it hard. I found it hard because well, I found it interesting because you're learning in the process too. And, and for me, like I saw, I was because I compare myself, you know, because you and I and my wife, like with the three, these are like the three or the two people I talk to the most, right? And um, but so I was like comparing, okay, yeah, my wife want to do this, or I would do this, or Matt would, do yeah, it, yeah. you know. So I'm like, oh shit, that's crazy. I could think that way now. Like I could see what he's saying, you know. Yeah, I could get in his head a little bit. Well, it's it, it's true, but the reason I found it hard was. Every every question was two questions, right? It was right, just like a question right. A or a possible A or B answer. There was there wasn't like a whole bunch of options. Mm-hmm. And I would say probably twenty five percent of the questions I went, man, I can identify with both of those pretty well. Oh, and I really? actually kind of struggled with a lot of them. But when mm. you sort of break it all down and you look back at like what my actual score was, it was a six. I'm somebody that overthinks things. I get anxious about things. I uh, second guess myself a lot. Mm-hmm. I fucking did that throughout the entire goddamn test right i was taking this test and every single question i was looking at both of them going i identify with both of these and then i would click on one i'm like i think i identify with this one most actually on second thought no i identify with this mm-hmm. one a little and so i was literally doing that throughout the whole test so when it got to the end of the test and i read it it's like you tend to overanalyze overthink and second guess yourself i'm like you're like do i do i really i don't think i, I don't do think no I, no i like, probably no, I do. do no no Shit. i don't no i don't i don't know i'll have to think about that a little further <laughs> but anyway so coming back to it i think the reason i've been able to sort of suppress that thing where if i don't know how i'm going to get there i still jump into it is that i feel like our safety net over the years has gotten bigger and bigger and bigger in Mm. the form of a network. So if I don't know how to make a landing page, if I don't know how to do something that we're trying to do like in the e-com space or don't know how to develop a software or talk to a team member, we know we have people we can go to and get the advice in those areas, which makes me feel a little more comfortable, you know, jumping without double checking my parachute a little bit. Double check. (laughs) No, it's 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 interesting, and I'm I'm a seven is my dominant trait. I totally forget exactly what it was because I did not read it that long. But essentially, it described exactly who I am as well. People um, pleaser. No, people pleaser. No, that was in there, wasn't it? I don't know. They don't say it is that. Uh, what the hell is it? So yours yours <laughs> tends to be a little. The enthusiast is mine. Is the name of <laughs> which, it, but ironically, was my least <laughs> dominant. Well, this is what's interesting. So Matt uh, guessed that I was a, um, and the three most dominant for me are a seven two and a nine. Seven two nine. Yeah, it's exactly your mirror. Yep. Which is crazy. So Matt's least are seven two nine. The enthusiast, the helper, and the peacemaker. Where I'm. Like those are my strengths. Yeah, which is pretty crazy. It just means um, that I hate people and you like people. Yeah, I mean it's <laughs> an interesting. That, well, this is why we've been told we're a good balance for each other, and 
I still think I'm like, how the hell can we coexist in a business <laughs> and be friends? But but be so We're an different. Anomaly. I don't think most people would. <sighs> I don't know, man. It's, <laughs> yeah. So Enneagram, it's interesting, and it's only like twelve bucks. Yeah, it costs twelve we, bucks. Um, your Enneagram wife's gonna Institute. take it. I'm gonna ask my wife to take it. It's just it's good info because you kind of learn mm -hmm. how other people's sort of default states are and how they will tend to react to things. That's kind of why you know I was a big. Um, I was kind of anti these assessments yeah. for a long time and up until about two years ago um, when I took the Colby and the disc sort of back to back that I kind of start to really see the power. It's mm -hmm. like I, I felt like there's this like self-fulfilling prophecy. If it told me that I was this way, then I would steer more in that direction because that's what I was told. Right. But my my stance on it sort of changed over time where they were pretty accurate. Right. Mm -hmm. I'd read them and I would read if I read other ones I'd go, yeah, that doesn't sound like me at all. Because I was always a little weary that maybe it was like that that sort of um, like go to like a what do you call it like a, a psych not a psychopath uh, oh, <laughs> psychics a psychic yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they're psychopaths not a psychopath but a psychic <laughs> like you go to somewhere. a psychic and like a lot of times they may say like oh you're the type that that just puts too much trust in others and uh, can often feel overwhelmed mm -hmm. and uh, tends to put too many things on your plate that couldn't fucking apply to anybody right but you're sitting there going. Yeah, that sounds like me. Sounds that like sounds me. just like me. You didn't even ask any questions of me, but you're just looking at me. Right. So <laughs> I, I thought like it was going to be that type of thing where they're telling you things that kind of apply to everybody. So you go, oh, this is right on. And then also there's that self-fulfilling prophecy element where they're like, oh, you're over analytical. Right. And because it tells me that I tend to start analyzing more often because I was told that that was my impression of those sort of things. Yeah. But what I've realized now is that I'm not taking those as much for myself and for it to tell me who I am and why I act this way. I'm more taking them so that I could go out there and tell you, this is who I am. This is why mm -hmm. I act this way. This is right. It's, it's more of a tool for other people than it is for me. I mean, it's great yeah. to understand, to read through the stuff and, and follow the advice that it gives you on. Here's some ways that you can kind of be more at peace with the way that you are. Um, I like that stuff. But I see this as more of a tool to like share with other people. Totally. Hey, here's who I am and why I'm like this. And they can get a better sort of insight into my brain and how to communicate with me. Yep. That's why my shifting, that's where the shift came for these assessments for me. And that's how we landed, uh, you know, Shannon as our, I'm just going to call her COO. Mm -hmm. CEO, that is, not COO. <laughs> She's taking, taking the top. Mm -hmm. Um, but we matched her up with, uh, the Colby assessment mm -hmm. along with, you know, a whole great assistant, uh, dot com freaking, you know, process there. But, uh, that was totally based off of, uh, personalities and you and I have been able to communicate better after this, I'm sure even better than what we were before. And, um, and I think it also gives you ways to improve. So mm -hmm. some things that you feel like you could shore up a little bit. Well, cool. Now you're like aware that this is true in this assessment and probably some other previous ass assessments. We've probably seen the similar thing. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Maybe that's something, you know. Well, and even you, you like to go back and even like refer to past assessments and like yeah. reread them from time to time and, yeah. and just sort of get like sort of a fresh perspective on it. Well, you know. it, it, for me, yeah, and I've said it before, is that it's a good way to uh, release maybe some pressure I've been putting on myself to mm -hmm. get good at this, a trait or something. And, uh, you know, uh, there's definitely, you can get better at things. And I know a lot of that becomes habit and, you know, just training yourself over time. Uh, but it's really cool because you could see the ones that you need some help in. You yeah. know, if you choose, you need help in that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's nice. So, Enneagram, that's E N N E. A G R A M. Yeah, just Google it because that's not the actual domain. It's actually uh, that's the name of it. the Enneagram. Enneagram. I'm surprised Enneagram.com wasn't available, but they got <laughs> Enneagram Institute. Who knows? Maybe it, maybe they have that too. I don't know. Yeah, if you're not paying twelve bucks, if it's over twelve bucks, you're probably in the wrong place. <laughs> so. Yeah, and yeah, it'd be interesting to see what kind of uh, following. Mm -hmm. We have listening to this. So go into our group and let us know what you are because we love talking about the assessments now. That's almost like one of our, yeah. our favorite things to do is like take an assessment, kind of get a little bit di different of a picture of how our brain works and then discuss. Sure. And yeah, so I mean, just think about how uh, even Shannon was saying uh, that she's had her whole family do this, a mm -hmm. lot of her friends. That's why we're having our wives do this. And it's just to just think about how much easier life can be if you actually understand the other person you're talking to, especially a loved one. 
that you're trying to communicate with effectively and mm-hmm. not be anxious, not have these blow up fights if that's your kind of thing. Or, mm-hmm. You know, you could prevent a lot of these things that none of us want. We're just like, just, just love, just be cool and have fun and enjoy the time we are. We're on this planet together, but actually like understand each other. So, you know, give you a little bit more space or time to make a decision for you, Matt. Mm-hmm. And for me, you know, have freedom to not freaking sit in the office all day long because I'll freak out if I do. Mm-hmm. So it's like little things like that. You're like, oh, you know what? A little freedom there. Yeah. I still find <laughs> it cool. hilarious that every single assessment we've ever taken, our scores are pretty much mirror images of each other. They're Dude, like the exact opposite. It just shows how <laughs> pretty accurate this is. Colby, disc, this one that we just took. You've, you haven't actually taken the Myers-Briggs yet. No. Um, I... I the, couldn't find my score but you took it i took it a while ago mm. um i don't remember what my score was but i think i've taken it like twice and both times i took it my my score came out differently oh so, like vastly different no or? no they were like close variations but it like they were slightly different because mm-hmm. um, they're not really supposed to change i could see it changing a little bit over time but not a lot a lot yeah i mean like something like a colby and like this one that we just took i don't see those ones changing the Myers Briggs. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like with like personal development work and experience and time mm-hmm. changes people. And I, I do see the Myers Briggs as being one that could be sort of a little more fluid. Like you probably won't jump from like this personality type to the complete mirror image opposite personality type, but there are some personality types that yeah. are very closely related that sort of overlap. And I can see you kind of, being in the in-between so when you take it one time you're in this slot and when you take it the next time you your number kind of drops you into this slot mm. but um uh, yeah i i think that one can evolve a little bit yeah i mean even this one that we just took i can see some areas where it might evolve because a lot of the questions are are based around are you more like data and methodical and analytical and making moves based on data or are you more like people based emotion based are you um, making decisions based off of quick emotions are you making decisions off of trying to please others Um, there's a lot of questions around that and I can actually see that possibly over time changing right like I I could at some point I tend to lean more on the like data methodical like look at the outcome approach where I think based on your results you tend to lean more on the um, you know, a little bit more emotional and a little bit more um, thinking of other people and how this is going to affect other people, right? Right. So, but I can see that's something that would evolve and change. Mm-hmm. You know, th- through things like you know uh, meditation and uh, uh, substance use, legal substance use. Water. We're talking about water, right? Okay. You can you can sort of like expand your thinking and all of a sudden have this like great love and enjoyment for just wanting mm-hmm. to help other people more it's us shining lights on stuff that you know if there's something we want to get better at i mean i'm constantly doing stuff if i feel like uh yeah like for me if i'm too much of the peacemaker like that's my third most uh, powerful trait out of this whole list you know if i'm constantly trying to give my all to someone else to my clients to my loved ones to whoever you you know and at the end of the day, I'm going to get way too much damn energy to that person and not to what I'm doing, what I want for myself. Mm -hmm. That's been my biggest aha in the last few weeks here is cutting, trying to cut the cord to these like energy drains in my life that, that completely put this weird energetic, like weight on my chest. Cause that literally is something that I've done recently is cutting ties to some places and, and, trippy but it's like within just a five minutes it can like for me i experienced a complete shift in mm-hmm. my body and now it's like no neck pain chest pain. like there's a lot of cool stuff that happens if you choose to change these things that you know you might not realize are draining you mm-hmm. and it could be anxiety in some ways you know it could be i don't know what all these other ones are but any trait mm-hmm. that you feel like might be a good trait. I don't know. It's worth examining and see how that actually feels like something I'm doing. I, t- I shared with you. And this is something I was talking to Mark Sacosta Rubio. He's been mm-hmm. on the show before. And uh, he was, you know, he introduced us to tapping and havening. We've mm-hmm. had the doctor on. Uh, and, 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 you know, I do this now. It's, it's interesting, but like twice in the shower <laughs> where I'll just like, I'll just like have these thoughts. I'm like, okay. And like kind of almost meditate and then like something 
pops up and I'm like, oh shit, I, I got to really work on that thing. Like mm. usually it starts off like, oh, I got too much on my to-do list. I got, I got so much shit. And then, you know, and this is actually a couple of days ago, I was like, oh, I should just be a lot more decisive on what I think like I really feel like is important here, not what others are dictating or like this email that, oh, send me these swipes, email swipes or, you know, it's like, yeah. wait, that's not important. Mute or, you know, pause for I don't know a day <laughs> yeah. and like reflects on me it was like I'll, you know, I'll usually start with this like cluster and then I'll morph into oh I just need to be more decisive and like prioritize better mm -hmm. and like get to more of this root and there's probably even more to that too yeah but that's what I've been working on like twice a day I'm like holy shit that's like a big old shift in my yeah kind of day for me being. like my therapy is quite honestly is gonna sound cheesy but quite honestly this podcast <laughs> and journaling because i tend to be someone who bottles up stuff can you know and fucking suppresses it and shit right mm -hmm. like i when i when i have emotions that i don't like i just try to like shut them down go take a puff on my puff pen water pen my water pen mm -hmm. um you know i try to i try to think of ways to sort of calm the anxiety and just bury it and never let it out again yeah, yeah, yeah but you know doing things like this podcast you and i when we tend to get together we're very fucking open with each other mm -hmm. <laughs> like anything goes pretty much mm -hmm. um and so we try to Except emulate that one thing that you don't want to tell anybody about right what well, yeah but <laughs> We can't tell Let's them not go that. there. We no. can't tell them that. Okay, carry on. <laughs> Sorry to bring that up. No. <laughs> now everybody's sitting there going, is it a dark secret or are they fucking around? <laughs> You'll we'll never know. <laughs> just just uh, come out to San Diego, buy us enough beers or something, and traffic and conversion, you'll get the secret. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. man. They'll Wherever be so disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you and I, when we have conversations, like we get like pretty open and vulnerable, mm -hmm. and pretty much like nothing is off limits. And so when we do these sort of duet episodes, they're like we called our last one a therapy <laughs> session because legit, we're just kind of I feel like trying to recreate are. some of those conversations that we have outside of recording on the recording. Yeah. So you know, you and I have each other as outlets to just fucking brain dump stuff. Yeah, um, you and I other. have this recording and all of our guests that we can brain dump on them or brain dump on each other. Mm -hmm. And then anything when we don't brain dump here, I try to brain dump on the journal. And I and I feel like that is how I sort of keep the anxiety and the wheels turning and the, oh shit, I don't know how to get from A to Z. That's how I kind of keep a lot of that at bay is I just need to unload it from my brain in some way or another. Yeah. It's, uh, I was actually thinking about that earlier. I was like, man, it's, we take it for, not for granted, but I tend to sometimes forget, you know, when Matt's like, all right, you ready to record? And, you know, we, we start <laughs> recording. I'm like, I forget that, you know, there's thousands of people listening to this every single time. I yes. appreciate you listening. But I'm like, yeah, it's, it's, it's very odd because. Have it, you ever what, had what, anybody what criticize, the, criticize anything that you said from a vulnerable place not on this at all. podcast though? Of course not. No. Yeah. And, and that's why I love our listeners and. Yeah. And if you are going to criticize me, get the hell off our podcast. <laughs> no, but like all we all like so to talk, go back to what you were saying about opening up on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Like literally all you did was throw some mics and a mic stand in front of your face. Mm -hmm. I happen to show up to your house and you hit this little red button and mm -hmm. you're like, it's recording. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> and then all of a sudden Matt's boom. Vulnerable. Well, here's the problem. Like I... <laughs> I know myself, I know my tendencies. And so if we sit here and go, what should we talk about today? What should we, what, like, <laughs> that's should like we, the death of any content should we, from us. <laughs> uh, should we outline on the whiteboard the topics we want to get into on this podcast? Hell no. Now you just threw me into analyze mode instead <laughs> of go mode, right? That's actually, that's very true because we were talking about, remember, there's another thing is that, uh, you know, we, we were talking about Toastmasters, remember? Speaking in front of... Mm -hmm. You were saying how they they really just give you note cards where a few bullet points or so, but really you're memorizing this, but you're memorizing bullet points. Mm -hmm. Whenever Matt and I talk in front of a stage or when we're on a webinar or doing some training, we have bullet points on the slides, but we're literally just riffing. We're, we're just being... We're just seat of our pants, just kind of going with it. Obviously, we know what we're talking about, mm -hmm. but nothing is scripted. There's not like, and that's probably why our webinars probably don't do Convert. so well <laughs> because we're just like, Fuck Get to the fucking point. <laughs> we're just having too much fun. So that's why we got to hire people to help us out. Yes. But, um, <laughs> side tangent. That's a, that's a recording for a different day. Yeah, it's a duet to, for a different day. Yeah. We'll do it then. A horse of a different <laughs> but, color. <laughs> 
blue. Um, yeah, but it's interesting to think about all of this. And this is like the, I think these assessments actually in a little bit of that water pipe you were talking, we were talking about um, have allowed me to get a little bit more introspect, a lot more introspective. And these things, like you can literally probably go down the results of this Enneagram thing and be like, all right, so what the hell does this mean? Mm-hmm. And then just meditate on that, you know, just breathe on sure. that, sit, whatever. And like, I guarantee, or journal on that, I guarantee you come up with some interesting shit as you peel that layer, you know, the onion layers back more and more to the core. Well, I mean, what what I find amazing is when we do assessments, and this doesn't happen with every assessment I've taken, but I read an assessment and I feel like it's describing stuff about me mm-hmm. that is true, but I didn't realize it until now. Like, it's very rare that you have aha moments around the way your own brain works. Mm-hmm. And I feel like doing these assessments, I've gotten that from time to time. It's like an elevated perspective of yourself. It's like looking at yourself as someone else or, yeah. you know, a, a, some, you know, I don't know, thing that's following you. Uh, it's interesting because you'll definitely notice stuff that's different. That's a similar um, yeah. little meditation I've done before. So it's it's like looking at yourself in a way that you never have before. And that's what this thing shines a light on. It's yeah. really cool. Well, one of the things that this assessment, I, uh, we de- we definitely weren't planning on going this deep down the rabbit hole of talking about assessments, but eh. um, <laughs> uh, we're going to actually have to wrap up in about 10 minutes. So we'll have to we'll have to go to the other thing that you dog-eared here in a second. But one of the things that I noticed about my uh, assessment was it was telling me something I already knew, that I get anxiety and my wheels are always turning. But it said um, it said that there's, what do they call it? There, there's phobic and there's uh, counterphobic, counter. right? So the, the assessment that I am, the number six, they said there's a phobic six and a counterphobic six. A phobic six is somebody that would see things that would give them anxiety and basically go the other direction. Like mm-hmm. if you have, I avoid it. Yeah. If you have like a fear of public speaking, you don't do w- it. When an option <laughs> to, comes up to public speak, you say, no, you go hide in a hole. You, you don't raise your, hand, your phone. Nothing. You, yeah. you, you kind of hide. Right. Or if you're afraid of heights, you don't get on planes. You don't go in tall buildings. Right. That's that's the phobic variety. And then there's what's called counterphobic, which are the group of sixes that get anxiety and they go, okay, this thing gives me anxiety. So let's move towards it. Hmm. And that's what I was I'm sort of classified as is I look at the things that give me anxiety that scare the shit out of me and go, fuck it. Let's Hmm. go for it. Right. Knowing full well, it's going to scare the shit out of me. Mm -hmm. But I, I go towards that direction anyway. Um, examples are public speaking. Yeah, I've had a huge done. amounts of anxiety towards public ski- speaking. It scares the shit out of me. But I went and signed up for Toastmasters. Every time somebody's come in to me and said, "Hey, do you want to speak it on this stage, or do you want to go to this event and you know be on a panel or something?" I always say yes. I always say that sounds scary as shit, but fuck it, let's do it. <laughs> right? I I have a fear of heights, a major fear of heights. Right? But I still yeah, you're tall, so I mean, you have to constantly. Live <laughs> I with still that. go up in tall buildings. <laughs> I still fly on planes. I still, uh, you know, I went zip lining and I've been rappelling and I do shit that scares the shit out of me. Mm-hmm. So I've got this sort of counterphobic thing, and I've never seen it spelled out so succinctly as when I read this thing. Is I have a lot of anxiety all the time. Because I'm constantly going towards the shit that scares me Mm -hmm. all the time. (laughs) It's like a growth mentality about it. Yeah. So, all right. Before I know we got to wrap in like six minutes Mm -hmm. because we have another podcast we got to record. Someone else's. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Yeah. It was dog earring. Well, it's, we were kind of just reflecting. I guess we could be quick because this would probably take more time, but just, just kind of reflecting on the path that we've come so far. And, uh, you know, you met someone. Probably no, don't need to even get into the story now because it would take too long. But the fact that you met someone uh, from your high school, you know, you're buying a car and all that, and mm-hmm. you're throwing out some, you know, some revenue numbers, and he's like, "Shit, times have changed." Yeah, yeah. You know, and and but you know, in us in a space, and you know, I've definitely had friends throw around different numbers of salaries or you know, weekly at, take home pay, whatever the hell it is, um, and be like, "Man, that is rolling. That's a crap ton of money." And then secretly in my head, I'm like. Uh, we get paid more than that. I mean, it's yeah. not it's not a bad thing at all, but I'm just like, well, I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. But I'm just like, wow. And then and then we and we thought about this is like we have enough mm-hmm. now. Obviously, there's more we want to scale for family, wealth, legacy, whatever. Uh, you know, but really, like where we're at now, you know, and we've been doing this thing for over ten years. You know, twelve, thirteen years, right? Uh, this year 12 2007 12 years okay 12 years 
that's crazy. Mm. <laughs> Most people never go through a career and do something that they love, work at home, spend time with their kids, hang out with their wives all day, whatever it might be, travel when yeah. they want, and then be like, fuck, I feel like I got what I need. Yeah, I mean, I, I think most people, I don't want to speak for everybody, but most people have this bad habit, and we both get caught up in it too, of comparing themselves to others instead of comparing themselves to mm-hmm. where they've been prior in the journey. And I'm not good enough mm-hmm. or right? whatever it is. And I think that's something that you and I talk about all the time and, and try to remind ourselves all the time is that, you know, you look 12 years ago. 12 years ago, we were both working at a shutter company. It was my parents' company. I think we were probably making $15 an mm-hmm. hour-ish. Something like that. Uh, the, the amount... Had to be there early. You did. Like yeah. 6 a.m. I was getting there at 6 a.m. to open the doors for the employees at 6.15. So I was getting up at 5 a.m. Um, <laughs> That's you know, not your, t- your hour. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I was uh, making 30 grand a year, getting up at 5 a.m. And having a job that kind of, you know, stressed me out and had some shit about it that wasn't that fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, and and look, we, we, de- we were deliberate. You were deliberate in that moment. Mm. I think your your downfall was literally work with the guy that was about to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, okay. At well, least he claimed that. he was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was all talk. Now he's dead. So. Yeah. He's dead, man. <laughs> Gotta rest his soul. <laughs> uh. <laughs> That's not the dirt, dirt, deep, dark, dirty secret, That's by the, the way. One. That is not it. So don't go there. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, but yeah. No, the fact of it matters, we took, you know, we took hold of our lives and we were confident enough at the moment in that time to be like, okay. I want more. Let's go. <laughs> and we both quit our jobs within a few months of each other. Yeah. Got married the same year too. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, it was really cool. So, but you know, to get to this point and I don't know, it just feels like we've been, we've been having fun experimenting, kind of dicking around, do what we love, yeah. obviously work our asses off, but then a lot of times not work our asses off. Yeah. It's so just, it's, it's been interesting because we've had, I guess what it is, is, all of the sudden, we haven't had this in a long time, but all of a sudden we're seeing a contrast that we've never really had this contrast effect before, right? Because what do you mean? so we're seeing a contrast between where we're at currently in our lives and our business contrasted to people that went to high school. With uh, us. Okay, so where we who we used to know or the place we were at. Yeah, at so one time. you and I, we operate a lot in our own bubble. Mm-hmm. Right, you and I talk a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brad Costanzo, we talk with Brad a lot. Brad Spencer, James Shramko, Bob Serling. You know, we've got like we've got this circle of people that we're talking to like multiple times per week, mm-hmm. and this is our our circle that we're constantly hanging out with and talking business with, and they're at a certain level. So we don't have much contrast. Uh, we're seeing people that are kind of doing a lot of similar things that we're doing. Learn from but each other. Yeah. When we run into people that we went to like high school front with, we're all of a sudden seeing this contrast of like, oh, wow, we've managed to get ourselves here in our lives and business. And they're still kind of here. Not, not, not It's not a bad thing. Like right, everybody right, right. has their own definitions of success, but we're seeing a contrast between our lifestyle and their lifestyle. Yeah. It's interesting. Cause I think it's the first time you and I have both realized that and have never thought of it in that sense. Yeah. But then looking at it, we're like, holy shit. Well, so what do to, we do? <laughs> to put some what context around it, like, we both kind of live sort of close to where we grew up. Right. We both moved away and we both kind of ended up right within, like, with, this sort of. Within literally a mile or two of each other. Yeah. We like, both kind of ended up, like, close to where we grew up. So now all of a sudden we're, like, bumping into people from high school and, mm-hmm. and college and stuff all the time and just and seeing that contrast. And it's been really fascinating because it's given us that that sort of gratitude to realize how far we've come. Yeah. No, it's totally gratitude. And I think it's it's that grounding, like you said. And that's something that I know that's my 2019. I'm, I'm working more on grounding myself, not... Uh, You're grounded. Like, yeah, I'm pretty damn grounded right now. Yeah. I don't know. I could feel some... Go to your room. You're grounded. <laughs> Good. But yeah, no, I've, I've done a lot of stuff. You know, like the ayahuasca thing was one that mm-hmm. it was a little bit more spacey feeling rather than grounding feeling. So it's, uh, I think this year, that's definitely my focus is yeah. to get more to my roots. Figure get out my how roots. That. Get the root. 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 Got no roots. We'll probably get sued now. Mm, yeah. Well, that's why I was trying to do random other sounds. Oh, like, yeah. It's not this song. They, they would listen to it and be like, no, he doesn't even have the melody <laughs> nope. right there. He's, he screwed that off. All, All right. right. Anyway, we got to jump off. We should do another one of these duets. Let's, go, let's record another one. You know what? They just make me feel better, I think. Let's do another one. When? Fucking an hour from now. We'll see. We'll see. All right. <laughs> there may be a round two of this duet coming out soon. There Maybe. may not be. We'll 